Welcome to the Mustard Seed Media Video Podcast. My name is Bob, and this is the podcast for Drupal web designers. Here at Mustard Seed, we are new converts to something called CSS Grids. Uh, you may be familiar with CSS Grid frameworks, and we're going to talk about them a little bit today. Uh, and we're not really going to show you so much how grids work uh, in and of themselves, but we're going to show you how to implement a grid into your Drupal site. Maybe you're an HTML designer that uses grids, and you're coming to Drupal and going, man, it's kind of tough to to uh, get my grids uh, and, and my code for my grids into my themes. How does all this work? Um, today I'm going to show you, give you a little overview of that. Um, so let's talk. Let's start, first talk about what grids are. What are CSS grids? They're frameworks, which means that they're pre-written code to allow you to easily implement um, uh, some, some code into your design without having to write it all new every time. Uh, so CSS grids do things like uh, allow you to easily lay out your columns, uh, your your um, you know your left sidebar, your content, your right sidebar, uh, any of that stuff without having to deal with floating, without having to deal with trying to figure out uh, the exact math to make sure all your padding and margins line up and all that stuff. It's a really really great system uh, to take a lot of the work out of layout uh, for CSS and HTML. Uh, but the only weird thing about grids is they're sort of backwards from what web standards say you should be doing. So in web standards, you should be naming all of your classes and IDs in your HTML and then styling those in your CSS, right? Well, grids work kind of the opposite. Because it's pre-written CSS code, all of your classes and IDs are defined already in your grid style sheets. And then you take those uh, style sheet names and move them back to your HTML, sticking them in where you want them, and that'll pre-lay out your code. Uh, I'm going to argue that, you know what, I'm a standards guy, but this doesn't bother me because it's so useful uh, that I'm okay with sort of going the other way around. So what I'm going to really be showing you today is how to take those preset classes and ID names and moving them into your Drupal theme. Uh, some cases it's easy, some cases it's more difficult, and I'm going to give you some tricks uh, on how to do that in Drupal much more easily. So enough blab and let's dive in and look at some of the stuff that we're going to deal with with grids. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to show you are two different grid systems that exist. They're sort of the two most popular grid systems. Uh, the first one is the 960 grid. Uh, and now something to know about these frameworks is that there's much more to them than just a grid style sheet that lays out your grid. There's resets, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, and really what I'm going to focus on today is just the grid. Um, I'm not going to be using these full systems, but uh, you can definitely use the full systems if you want to. So there's the 960 grid. Um, the, the difference between grids is just sort of the code. So 960 grid defaults to a width of 960 pixels um, due to, uh, you know, uh, sort of optimized for a 1024 by 768 display. Um, and so the grids really just differ in uh, their naming conventions, their classes, uh, and the widths and column widths and stuff that they use. So 960 was written by Nathan, Nathan Smith, a new friend of Mustard Seed. Uh, we met him at uh, the Design for Drupal conference in Boston. And actually, we did, uh, I wanted to point you over to, we did an interview with Nathan over on my audio podcast over at geeksandgod.com slash episode 124 if you're interested in that. So someone took, uh, and they actually did a demo on this at uh, the Boston uh, conference, someone took the 960 grid system and created a theme for it. So you can just use 960 uh, as your starting theme, use it as a base theme, and then develop under that if you want. The thing with 960, uh, just to know, is that there's a whole lot more in this 960 theme than just the 960 grid system. Uh, it's much more uh, complex than that. If you want to just develop a, just the grid file. You don't want to use all the other stuff. You just want to use the grid for layout. Uh, there's this great uh, variable grid system generator uh, for 960, and it works simply by saying, you know what, I want my column width to be 25 pixels, and you can see it's adjusting everything on the fly. I want 20 columns. Uh, it's going to give me my width here, and I want my gutter width to be 15. Um, so I could do all of that, just download the CSS file, and that'll give me a generated CSS file to use with this grid. Uh, beyond 960, there's also Blueprint. Blueprint happens to be what I use now. I've thought about going to 960. There's all kinds of pros and cons to both. Uh, this is Blueprint at BlueprintCSS.org. Uh, there is also a Blueprint starter theme for Drupal, which is very nice. Um, this will, uh, you can, again, use this as a base theme and develop underneath that. Um, there is also a Blueprint grid generator. This one is not nearly as good as the 960 because you actually have to figure out 
uh, stuff. It won't just auto adjust everything like the 960 generator does. Uh, but this is available too. All these will be in links uh, over at uh, mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast slash episode 33. Um, I'll put links to all of these. Um, so let's look at how to actually use these things. I'm going to use a blueprint grid um, just to start out, but let's look at how to just take a grid style sheet, implement it into your theme, and uh, make all this happen. Just so you can get an overview of what's happening here in my HTML code, what you're looking at here is really three columns. Uh, they just don't have any positioning done to them. So here, right here is my left column. This is my center content column. And then these two blocks down here are going to be my right column. So let's look at how to use a grid system to lay these things out. First thing that I'm going to want to do is create a grid.css or whatever you want to name it. Just a new style sheet that's just going to contain your grid. Now, I happen to have downloaded Blueprint's um, grid style sheet. This is sort of what it looks like here. And I'm just going to copy this code and put it into my new grid.css. Then what I need to do is go into my info file for my theme and add my new style sheet so my theme picks it up. You're going to want to add your grid probably um, after a lot of your other styles uh, just to make sure things are being overridden properly. So I'm going to add my grid.css. Then I'm going to uh, flush all my caches or uh, at least go to your themes page and save the theme so it recognizes your new uh, style sheet properly. Now this isn't going to change anything because I haven't actually put the code in here yet. The only thing that it did is it you'll see that it centered it on here because in my grid uh, style sheet I have something called uh, my container. With blueprint by default your container is 950 pixels wide and if we look at my page.tpl you'll see that I have my all of my content wrapped in my container. So what it did is it set my container to 950, uh, set auto margin so it centers it um, on the page, and we're all good to go. Now what we want to do is lay out our columns. Using a grid system, laying out our columns is as easy as uh, putting a couple of class names in my page TPL for my right, left, and center columns. Now, uh, in Blueprint, in the, ha in, the, in the one that I happen to be using, in the grid style sheet that I happen to be using, I have it's a 24 column grid so all I have to do is make sure that my um, my class names uh, end up to be 24 column wide and I'm done so what I'm gonna do is my left sidebar I'm gonna add a span of uh, oops I'm sorry I'm gonna add a class of span 6 that's telling me I want it six columns wide this naming convention is just for blueprint uh, 960 and other grids have a different naming convention, but I'm going to add the same width to my right sidebar. And then I'm going to add a width of 12 to my center column. 6 plus 12 plus 6 is 24. That's the number of columns I have. But in Blueprint, you actually, on your last column, you have to add a class of last. Uh, this gets rid of the margin on the right side um, of the last column to make sure that everything's going to fit. Now all i got to do is shift refresh and you'll see I now have my layout. How awesome is that? So just by using the preset stuff, I can change that. Now, let's say I wanted uh, my center column to be 15, and uh, you know I wanted uh, my right column uh, to be 4, and this one to be 3. I think I added that right. So if I refresh, it now changes all of my widths. So that's how easy it is uh, to just implement this stuff into your theme. But let's look at a slightly more difficult case, and this is really where some Drupal-specific stuff starts to happen. Um, let's say that I'm going to go to my blocks menu. Let's say I want to throw some blocks in my content region. I'm going to add my uh, navigation and my who's new and my primary links all into my content section um, onto my home page. Now, my home page is a custom uh, page.tpl. Uh, it's pagefront.tpl that um, what it's doing is getting rid of the sidebar. So I'm just dealing with a content region. So let's say I wanted to lay out these blocks. That's all great, except for the fact that um, I want to float them using my grid, but I can't easily add classes into these blocks, can I? These blocks need to be able to have these classes like span 15, span 3, any of this stuff added to the actual block themselves, and I can't do that by default here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a module called the block class module. Uh, what this does is it allows me in the UI, in the block settings, to add classes uh, to my individual blocks. Now to get this to work, uh, you're going to go to the block class page and uh, what you're going to see is uh, this little snippet right here. 
or you can use this snippet which actually checks to make sure that the uh, class is uh, the, that the block class module is working so what you're gonna do with that snippet is you're gonna go to your block uh, .tpl and you're gonna need to add a class wrapper using that what that does is out uh, generates a proper class to identify uh, this block as something that's using block class module so you have to add that as a class to your block.tpl. Once I've done that, what you're gonna see is I can now go to my block settings, and for each one of these blocks, I now have this new field for CSS classes. I'm gonna make all of these span eight. So the who's new block, I'll add a class of span eight. Then the navigation and primary links blocks, I'll add classes of span eight. And what these are going to do, these are going to insert those wherever I have that um, class in my block.tpl. And remember to add last if you're using Blueprint. And now if I go back to my home page and I refresh, you're going to see that these have now laid themselves out very nicely. Uh, block class module to me is a must use if uh, you're doing block layouts within your content. Um, on a Drupal site. So hopefully that gives you a little intro on how to use grids uh, within Drupal. Block class module is a must. Uh, some of the other class names you can just put into your theme uh, directly. Um, if you have any questions on this, jump over to uh, mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast slash episode 33 where this episode is and post your comments. Uh, thanks again for all your support with the chip-ins. You'll see that we had three podcasts out this week because you guys keep chipping in. Uh, if you like these podcasts and you want to support them, Next time there's a banner on top of the homepage that says our next podcast is ready, just click that banner and it'll take you to the one where we're collecting chip-ins uh, to get it online. That's it uh, this week. Visit us over at geeksandgod.com. That's my audio podcast as well. And look for another podcast. Uh, as soon as we got another idea for an episode, uh, we'll throw up another chip-in and you guys can help out to get it online. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, that's it. We'll see you next time on the Mustard Seed Media video podcast.